What's going on YouTube? Matt from Garage MC here. Today's video guys, we're going to talk about these A-Arms from Team Alba Racing and we're also going to install them and go over what they're made of, what the benefits are, some things you should and shouldn't do when you're running wider A-Arms uh, such as these. You still can, but there's a few things you got to do if you're going to, but we'll talk about that in the video. This is what we're going over today guys. Team Alba Racing. All right. Let me uh, let me get all this extra stuff out of the way, guys, and we'll get going on this. All right, guys, so I saved the right side to hook up with you guys on camera. Um, the way that these come, these A-arms are made from 4130 chromoly steel, and uh, chromoly is the strongest steel. Uh, the cheap Chinese knockoffs are usually made from, like, st stainless or mild steel, both pretty weak metals compared to chromoly. Um, these were packaged quite nicely in the box. Uh, these, I actually just took this side out of the box. So between shipping and me kicking them around the garage and out in the shed and in the other shed all this time, the, 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 the finish on these is like impeccable, guys. Uh, you see these online. Um, you can purchase these on eBay. Uh, if you stick around till the end of the video, <clears throat> I have a 10% discount code that I'm going to share with my viewers. And if you are a subscriber and you contact Alba, I will give you their contact info uh, here over the screen. But you can save yourself 10% on your whole order if you call them directly. Um, these particular A-arms are, you, you could adjust your camera, obviously, with the, um, the ball joints here. You can also set the caster. So if you guys look in here, there's a spacer on each side. I have it set in the neutral position. You could either put both spacers to the front, which would give you a lot of caster, like caster meaning the way that the axis that the steering is on is tilted like this way or this way. The further back you tilt it, the quicker the quad is going to steer, but it'll be very twitchy at high speeds. So depending on your riding style, you know, you could set it whichever way you want. Um, also, with these A-arms, uh, you can all, obviously also do the toe adjustment as well. That's like how the wheel sits in or out, like if you're looking at the front of the quad. Um, I usually like to keep mine a little square, if not maybe a little toed in. But that's all, you know, it's whatever style you guys go with. One thing that does not come with these are tie rod ends. It does come with the tie rods. These are stainless steel. The, the finish on them is pretty nice too, by the way. Um, there's a bunch of different brands of tie rod ends that you guys can buy online. Uh, these here are BFE team. These are chromoly tie rod ends that I have. Uh, that is one thing you will have to purchase, but this kit comes with the upper and lower ball joints for both sides. It comes with the aluminum spacers for your uh, caster adjustment. Comes with the nuts for the tie rod ends. Comes with all the cotter pins. It's a pretty comprehensive kit. While we're installing this, we'll talk about other benefits that are with these. And we'll also are going to talk about why I went with uh, the Elka Stage 1s on here over the stock TRX 450R shocks. You can still run them. This is all a preference thing, but we'll go over why I switched them out and... You know what you can do if you still want to use your stock shocks guys when you order these a arms from team alba racing <clears throat> now here's here's a big thing that i really like these go in here in this fashion here the uh the del it comes with brand new delrin bushings everything's all pre-installed um they come with a zip tie on it like this so they don't get lost during shipping or whatever you got going on there's also these little caps <laughs> that cover the zerk fittings so you can grease the bushings I've bought other A-arms in the past. Uh, actually, I'll walk you guys out to the shed real quick, and I'll show you the Lone Star A-arms that I paid a pretty, pretty penny for. They were they were pretty expensive. Um, I mean, you know, that's what you get into when you start doing upgrades like this. But the Team Alba Racing A-arms, the Zerk fittings are positioned at the bottom of the A-arm. So let me walk you guys out to the shed and show you the difference of what happens when they're on the other side, when they're on the top of the A-arm. One, I mean, they're not really that good looking, like, you know, it's a Zerk fitting, so it's not like it should be like a, a key focal point of the parts that you put on your quad. 
But uh, let me show you these Lone Star A-Arms that I bought. They're also plus two. And uh, the difference with them being on the top is I'm not too happy about it. But uh, let me show you guys. So before I walk you guys out to the shed, even on a 400, this is a 450R, um, 400X, same style frame. It's there, you know, some of the geometry is different. Some of the, you know, points where obviously the motor goes and all that stuff, all that stuff's different. But we're talking about A-arms in this video. So 400X, if you were to strip this frame down and cut it like here and put it next to another half cut of a 400X, it looks identical, right? So you got this plate up here. So if you have a Zerk fitting on the top instead of like Team Alba Racing does, puts it on the bottom, which is, you know, pretty pretty smart to do it that way, because you have room for it. Let me go show you what the difference is. So, for any of you guys that are new to my channel, this is just one storage shed, guys. This is my little 250R heaven in here, <laughs> um, along with a few other things, obviously. There's an 86 TRX 250R, there's an 85 ATC 250R, 250R parts everywhere. But here's my 465 EX build. Um, like I was saying, if you guys are new to the channel, welcome. We got a lot of stuff, man. Uh, I'll even throw you a peek of the other storage shed so you guys can see what's going on. But here's Lone Star Racing plus two A-arms. The Zerk fitting's on the top. I had to literally notch the frame out, <clears throat> which I'm not too thrilled with. Otherwise, it's either that or you take the Zerk fittings out and plug the hole and, I mean, then it's like, what's the point? You can't even service them then. You have to take them all apart. But that's what I had to do there. But, uh, like I just said, let me uh, walk you guys around to the other shed, and I'll show you what other type of content we got going on. Here is the other uh, storage unit for other content we got going on. I got, uh, there's all kinds of stuff in there, guys. 450R motor, CR125 engine. There's the wheels and tires. Also, Alba bead locks for the 465EX build. Um, <laughs> What's left of a Raptor 700. Here's a 400EX I just picked up the other day. Uh, totally, totally ran way too lean and melted the piston down. Um, that engine is completely, completely trashed. It's actually in this tote here. If you guys didn't see that video, go check it out. Uh, the <laughs> piston doesn't even look like a piston anymore. Here's an 05 frame that is going to be this build here. This is an 07 for a subscriber I'm building this quad. Um, we got the 465 plastics and 250R plastics and all kinds of other stuff over there, guys. Stacks of tires, OEM gold Honda wheels that are, like, worth stupid money nowadays. Uh, a bunch of swing arms. Yes, that's a street bike swing arm. That's uh, stuff I do in my personal life. I don't really film that stuff. Um, 250R, another 250R three-wheeler, another 250R three-wheeler. The extremely hard-to-find triple trees and forks and front hub and everything for another 250R, 250R swing arms, axles, there's the Lone Star axle for the 465EX build, another 450R frame, 400EX frame, 400EX frame, uh, extra 400EX, quad for uh, a buddy of mine that I'm working on, 450R plastics, oh, and there's this blaster here guys, I picked this up for a decent price and just cleaned it up, this is a first kick starts right up ready to ride not really gonna do much with that other than sell it uh i really don't have any interest in a blaster um a few of you guys have been asking me for parts if i'll sell parts uh any parts that i'm gonna sell guys i'm gonna start up an ebay store and you guys can you know find the stuff on there uh, i'm not gonna do that whole messaging back and forth and selling stuff paypal cash app all that stuff never really works out too good um, when I do get an eBay store up and running, you guys will definitely have the link to it, and anything that is for sale will be sold. Anything that isn't won't be for sale. Let's get into the A-arms, what you guys clicked on. Let's start getting everything mocked up in here. Um, this is the Alka Stage 1 shock that I'm putting in here. Uh, whenever I usually build a quad, guys, I'll order a whole uh, stainless steel hardware kit for the whole quad. Um, you, you can use your stock hardware, obviously. Um, I'm just dry fitting all this stuff for now to show you guys how this goes together. I will be anti-seizing and, you know, greasing and everything like that when the final install is done. Uh, hardware kit that I get, these are the shock bolts here. I usually swap everything over to Allen head bolts throughout the whole quad. It simplifies the tool kit and all that stuff that I custom make for the quad with all the stuff that's on it. Uh, the two bolts that come for the shock, this has nothing to do with the A-arms, but 
Obviously the shock has to go on to get all this set up. One's longer than the other. The shorter one goes through the top. Just like, just like so. Now that we got that in there, of course a garbage truck has to come through right now while I'm filming, right? Anyway, these bushings come with zip ties on them, like I told you before, so you don't lose any of the stuff. All the bushings and everything are pre-installed. Just like this here, you get the two Delrin bushings that are in the A-arm, and then the sleeve goes in there. Cut this other one off. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this lined up. Also, with these Team Alba Racing A-arms, guys, they slide right into the frame. Those, uh, those Lone Star A-arms that I have, I, I literally had to force them into the 400X frame. Like, I mean, and I don't mean just like wiggle them a little bit. Like, I had to force, damn near pry them into the frame. These just slide right in. Like, the, the fitment and the way that they're manufactured, to, to me, that makes like all the difference in the world to me. I like that there's no BS that you have to go through just to get these things into the quad. I was a little upset about that uh, when I put the Lone Star A-arms on the other quad, like enough to where I actually messaged the seller and said something about it, and their whole excuse to me was, oh, well, any A-arms, any aftermarket A-arms you get, you're going to have to pry and force them into the frame. Well, like I said before, I'm calling bullshit. Here's your proof. No, all aftermarket A-arms do not need to be forced into the frame. Uh, I didn't like that one bit, but all right. Um, let me get the other top one on. I'll show you guys how these aluminum uh, spacers go for the top one to adjust your caster, and we'll talk about that a little bit. This is kind of a, a funky angle. I'm like, <laughs> I got the camera and the tripod in front of me, guys. But you can see that these, these bushings in here, this is where you get your caster adjustment with these aluminum bushings that come with the kit. It comes with four for each side. So here's the other two over here. Um, the more neutral position would be putting one aluminum by you know that, that's how you do it you, you drop it on the ground hold on take two <laughs> as they say you would put one aluminum bushing on each side of each part of the a-arm so four in total for each side so i'm going to be running the more neutral position um if you guys wanted like less caster which would be putting the uh axis that the hubs turn on or the knuckles you would put two at the rear part of the a-arm if you want more steering like really fast turning like i guess you would use it for like x uh gncc or whatever uh, i mean i ride quads all the time guys i couldn't tell you all the like racing terms and all that shit uh you know i just this is just like a hobby of mine so anyway let me move this a little bit make sure you guys can still get a good angle here which is probably impossible so an easier way to do this guys is to pre-put pre-put the bushings on both side both sides of this uh upper a-arm and get them on there and then slide it all in together as like one unit um it's a little it's a little tedious but it's not that hard all right so here you guys go i got both of them on either side of the upper a-arm and then just come in here and being that these don't have to be pried in lone star if you're watching ship box um go ahead and get your bolt started also these are also uh allen head bolts it's like a pretty common thing that i do to every single quad and now that's in there just like that let me show you guys a little you guys a little better angle not that you didn't see it on the other side but not putting the nuts on the back yet um the hardware kit that i ordered uh comes with nylock nuts that go on those so no need for um loctite or anything like that uh if you guys are installing these <clears throat> and you're putting them in and that's it uh i would anti-seize the bolts 
uh, make sure everything's good and anti seized. And then you don't tighten these down to the torque spec. Uh, I will go in the manual and get the torque specs for all of these bolts that go to the front suspension so you guys can see and know what it says in the manual. Um, but after you would tighten everything, when the quad is on its own weight on the ground on its wheels, that's when you would tighten all your suspension stuff. Uh, everything on this whole quad right now that pivots or has bushings or anything like that, they're all hand tight right now. None of them are to spec. I don't do any of that until the quad is down on the ground. If you tighten it while there's no weight on any of it, while it's like up on the lift like it is now, like n nothing is tight right now, guys. The pivot bolt, the, the shocks, the linkage bolts, anything with the A-arms or the front suspension. If you guys tighten those now and then just drop the quad and go ride it, you're going to get squeaks and stuff like that. That shit drives me nuts and makes it sound like a piece of shit. You know what I mean? You go ride a quad with a bunch of squeaks, you're like, what the, you know what I mean? Like, what the hell's wrong with this thing? Probably bone dry, even though it's probably lubricated. Anyway, let's talk about why I went with different shocks on this quad over the really good OEM TRX 450R shocks. No, they're not for sale. So, let's talk about why we went with different shocks. Like I said before, guys, yes, you can run your stock shocks if you have the preload adjustments and all that stuff if you are going to run wider a arms such as these which is plus two plus four overall two inches on this side two inches on this side now that the the shock location where it mounts is in the same exact spot so where your distance and extra width comes from is from here to here okay so it's two inches more um, pretty sure I don't need to explain leverage to you guys. It's like, you know, you're trying to take a bolt apart with a small quarter inch ratchet and you can't, and you get like a breaker bar and you only got to like breathe on it and it cracks it free. That's leverage or that's, you know, uh, an, an example of leverage, I should say. Um, more leverage on this shock, meaning when you like take a jump or land or something like that, you could easily bottom out your stock shocks. So... If you're going to run your stock ones, like if you had a 400EX, don't even think about it because you're going to bottom the shocks out if you're like jumping and stuff like that. But uh, the 450R shocks, like I said, they have those adjustments and obviously the Alcas do too. But um, with more leverage here, if you were to bottom this shock out, it, you could run the risk of either bending the A-arms or snapping the shock mount or messing the shock up. But... That's why you would want to go to different shocks. Um, I bought these actually secondhand. Got a really good deal on them. Actually, I, I won a bid on them. That's probably why I got them cheap. Nobody else was looking at them. So I kind of like stole these things. So anyway, that's why you would uh, want to run different shocks. If you're not jumping and stuff, by all means, do whatever you want. Put, put a piece of friggin' square tube in there with two holes in it and just ride it around rock solid if you want. It's your quad. Do whatever you guys want. This is just what's recommended when you do, not just from Team Alba Racing, but any A-arms that you do. Obviously, leverage is leverage, guys. So, all right, let's get into putting the ball joints in, and we'll get the tie rod set up as well. Let's get our ball joints going into the A-arms. Now, these come with the A-arms from Alba, guys. There, there is... Uh, there's this one here that's like a 90 degree, and then there's this one here that has an angle to it. If you guys can see the difference there, clearly they're both different. Uh, the angled one is for the upper A-arm. The lower one is for the bottom A-arm. That's what we're going to start with here. Um, these are going to be going in now for the final time. So what I do, like I do with everything else I do, usually on the quad... You guessed it, anti-seize guys, Permatex, anti-seize. I will put anti-seize on the, like maybe about a third of the way in here. Just make sure I coat the whole area there. Um, I mean, you could do the whole thing if you want, but it's, it's only gonna use what it's gonna use anyway. So these thread in to the bottom A-arms and they also come with this nut on them, they come in the package that way. You want to take this nut off. This is the locking nut that goes on the inside. You don't want it here between the A-arm and the ball joint. You want it on the other side. So I'll put that to the side for right now. Get this 
started to thread in and I will thread these all the way in. You don't want to run them with them all the way out like that. Uh, it's just, just not how they're going to work. You want to get that threaded in as much as you can. This goes right back to that same thing we were talking about before guys, leverage. Um, just thread it all the way in. And on the nut that goes on the other side, uh, this I'm not going to crank home yet until I get all my adjustments done and that's going to be you know towards the end of the build when the quad is on the ground and we get all our camber and caster and everything we're trying to set up that'll be in a later video for you guys um, we also just got done doing the steering stem from Alba plus two inch put all new pivot works bearings and bushings in for the steering stem and we also just got done doing the swing arm rebuild with new pivot bearings and that all right so right about there this gets put on here that's a lock nut we'll crank that home when we decide where everything's going to be now let's get the top ball joint in the top ball joint from alba comes with a large nut on the end of it with it's a nylock nut guys it's got that nylon ring in there so no need for loctite or anything this one you want to take off, and it also has this other nut on here. This is your other lock nut, jam nut, whatever you want to call it. This sets your amount of how far you do your uh, camber adjustment, and that's where you do get your camber adjustment from here. The top A-arm is not threaded, so I'll usually start out. I'll put the jam nut, lock nut, whatever you want to call it, all the way towards the ball joint. And then I will slide this in. Like I said, there's no threads on this one. Just goes in like that. And then I will just put the lock nut on there just to keep the ball joint on the A-arm. You can go ahead and we can just set this like this for now. That's what gets your, your difference. Uh, this is for your camber adjustment. So if you wanted a lot of camber, like you wanted the wheel to be tipped in towards the quad, you would run it like that. Um, I usually like to run mine pretty square, maybe a hair of camber, but like I said, we'll you guys can see how I end up setting this up uh, in a later video. So we'll just set this up like this for now. I don't even know where I have the other one set. I haven't even had this quad on the ground yet, guys. So, all right, let me get out my knuckle and we'll start putting that onto the ball joints here. And then we'll get into putting the tie rod in. Putting the knuckle in, it's uh, pretty simple, guys. Just take the castle nut off of here. Get this coming off. And then take it off of there and also take it off of the upper ball joint. The upper one comes with a washer. The washer goes towards the rubber part of the ball joint. Uh, if you notice, this is rubber here. So you want to have your washer in like that. None of these are going to get cranked tight yet either, guys. Like I've said already a couple times. So this one goes in there like that, and you just want to get your get your nut on there. Like I said, I'm just doing these loose for now because I'm not going to know where I'm setting these until the end. Get that seated on there, and the bottom one is a castle nut. This upper one has a nylon nut on it, guys, so no need for... No need for a cotter pin on that one. That's it, man. That's really all there is to it. Like I was telling you before, guys, you loosen this nut up here, this gives you your, your camera adjustment. So it tips the top of the wheel in. Pretty simple. It seems complicated, but it's really not, guys. It takes a couple minutes to, you know, set it up the way you want, and it's, that's it. All right, so let's move on to the tie rod. Let's, uh, let's talk about that for a second. So the tie rods also come with the Team Alba Racing A-arms. These are made out of stainless steel. Like I said, you do need to purchase tie rod ends, okay? Um, one side of these is regular right-hand thread and the other side is left-hand thread. Uh, if you'll notice, one of these nuts is gold and one of them is silver. This flat spot here, this is where you would put your wrench on it to adjust, adjust like your steering and uh, toe and can uh, yeah, your toe. That's <laughs> where you would adjust your toe, guys, right here. Um, these are jam nuts, so when you get it set to where you want, that's what 
determines, you know, how, how, however you set up like your wheels, if they were to be, you know, towed in or, or towed out or towed in, that's where you would get this adjustment from. When I'm setting these up, I will spin them all the way onto the tie rod, both sides, okay? And I'll put them into the quad. This way, you're all the way threaded in. You don't want to have like a ton of threads in this one and just adjust it on the other and there's only a little bit of thread stuck in there. It's not good to run it that way. But uh, let me show you the, like how the reverse thread on one side and regular thread on the other works when you are twisting your tie rod to set your toe. All right, so here, you can see where this is now. And I have this set up the same way, guys. This is just loose, just sitting here for now. But like this is pulling them both in, you're threading in to both sides. You're threading into where it is on the steering stem. And you're also threading into the tie rod where it meets the knuckle. And you can see how it's turning the wheel. So if you spin it the other way, this is what starts towing it back in. That's why I said it's pretty important to start with the tie rods threaded all the way into the tie rod ends at first. And then you can set up where you want it. When you get it to the location that you want, then you just simply take your jam nut or lock nut. And then you'll want to hold down on the flat spot that's on the tie rod, like up here where my fingers are. You want to hold that with a wrench and then crank this down. You don't want to, you know, you don't have to smash it home. Just crank it and then give it a little, uh. You know what I mean? That's how I usually set them up. Let me throw some wheels on this bad boy and we'll see what we're looking like real quick. Oh, actually, let's start a tie rod in. That's probably an important part too, I think. So your tie rods, guys. The uh, the flat spot, the flat spot, <laughs> listen to me. The flat spot that is on the tie rod here in this nice, beautiful stainless steel tie rod. Um, I always put those by the uh, the flag of the steering stem. So on these, the tie rod goes from the top into the flag of the steering stem. And the other side where it meets the knuckle goes from underneath into it. And then these tie rods, or the tie rod ends that I have, they come with a washer and a castle nut. The washer goes on the top and then the castle nut goes on and these would also get cotter pins. These, if you wanted, you could uh, you could crank these home now. I'm not going to, but let me get this thing set on wheels, and then we'll go over adjusting like uh, the toe of the wheels. I don't know why I can't keep thinking of that name, but let me throw wheels on this, and I'll be right back with you. So while I'm putting the wheels on the quad, here are your torque specs as per the Honda or Climber manual. Here's torque spec for the upper ball joint. Here's torque spec for the lower ball joint. Here's the torque spec for the lower shock bolt. Here's the torque spec for the upper shock bolt. Here are the torque specs for the um, A-arm bolts that mount it to the frame. If you have a factory bolt and nut, it will be a 14 millimeter bolt with a 14 millimeter nut. And last but not least, here are the torque specs for the outer tie rod. And here are the torque specs for the inner tie rod, where it bolts to the steering stem, which is also a Team Alba Racing Plus 2 Chromoly steering stem. And for those of you that are interested, here are the torque specs for the lug nuts, where you mount, put the wheel on. I couldn't help myself, guys. I had to throw the front, the, uh, front fairings and the 4Works carbon fiber hood and the bumper on. <clears throat> this is like my favorite part of the build guys when you start to put it down um, i usually like to run my quads either completely totally square or the rear tires slightly in less wide than the front um, when you run with the wa the rear wider than the front it, it doesn't it doesn't like it doesn't steer right to me it doesn't anyway i don't i don't feel like it does um this thing's really starting to look sick guys this Alba Plus 2 steering stem, uh, I'm sure you guys know, when you run aftermarket bars, you can no longer, I mean, you can, but the uh, where the key and the neutral and the overheat light goes in, it doesn't really fit too well um, after you switch bars with a bar pad and stuff like that, at least on this quad it didn't. So uh, what I had done was 
I took a piece of aluminum. The Alba steering stem comes with two, two threaded holes on the bottom of it. Um, I figured I'd make good use of those. So I took a piece of aluminum, guys, and then I wrapped it with carbon fiber. I think that looks, I, I think that looks sick. Um, and it totally is functional and solves the issue that you can't run where the key goes and everything. Um, I kind of like it with no fenders, man. Even even with the fenders on there, they're really not going to do too much anyway, as wide as we are now. But I, I think that, you know, I'm a, I'm a cut fender kind of guy. So, you know, I don't know. I mean, I could always bolt them back on. I do like the way that looks, though. I think it looks sick. But back to the task at hand. You can see I have the left side pretty straight. Um, I might take the lower ball joint and push it out just a bitch. A bitch. Just a bitch. Yeah, I'm going to push that out just a bitch, guys. <laughs> uh, I'm going to push it out just a little bit because I like a little bit of camber, meaning I like the top of the wheel tucking in towards the quad a little bit more. Right now, it's kind of it's kind of cambered out at the moment. So, um, over here at this side, you notice the wheel isn't straight. The handlebars are straight right now. So this wheel is pretty much where I want it. This one isn't. So let's just uh, go over real quick with the tie rod here. You'll see the movement with the wheel. Make sure we're going. Yep, there we go. So you'll see the wheel is turning. more all right so i think you guys get the point here but yeah that's it guys sometimes uh stuff like this might seem like a little bit of a daunting task it's really not man and the end result is just like just amazing look at that alba front bumper too guys i think it suits the quad very well especially with the pointy hood that's on there and everything well i hope you guys enjoyed this video i hope it was helpful for helpful to you uh when you guys are installing stuff like this use anti seize grease all that good stuff. Make sure you take care of your quads. Do your maintenance, guys. Double check all your bolts every once in a while, you know, because you're, you're out there cruising, man. You lose a wheel at, you know, 50, 60 miles an hour out in the woods and hit a tree. Probably not going to end well. So, uh, thank you guys for checking the video out. Appreciate you guys coming. If you have not yet, please subscribe to the channel. We got tons of content coming your way. Um, any comments, if you put down here, I do read and answer all of my comments. And I'll see you guys in the garage next time. Thanks for joining me. As promised, guys, for staying to the end of the video, here is your 10% off discount code from Team Alba Racing from me. Um, here's also their number, their website, call, speak to anybody there. They're more than helpful. They're very knowledgeable. They, they, they know their shit, guys. So here's the discount code. Enjoy your products from Team Alba Racing, and I'll see you guys in the next one.